Today, we've got the best case scenario in the 2024 election for Donald Trump. Yesterday, I did the best case scenario for Biden. So today, we're going to see what things look like if everything lines up for Trump. Just like for Biden, this is going to be the best reasonable case scenario. This is not going to be Biden goes completely senile and Trump massively outperforms all the polls. This is basically going to be Trump maintains his momentum and this pretty much turns into a red wave. Now, there's definitely going to be different takes out there, but given that we're still seven or eight months out. I try not to get too crazy with the map. I'll update this until the election. So let's start with the safe states for Trump. These should be over a 10 point margin. So in this, of course, he's going to get Alaska safe. Plus, he's going to get all the usual red states from Idaho all the way across to West Virginia and South Carolina. But in a great night for Trump, some other states are going to hit 10 points and those are going to be Iowa. There's a chance that even at a regular night for Trump, this goes safe. And my regular prediction, it's unlikely. But for this, we've got to bump it up a few points and it's going to go safe. We're also going to give him Ohio by a safe margin. This again could potentially hit 10 at a regular night, but in this, I think a fair call is to put it at safe. And we're also going to go down to Texas and say this just hits about 10 to 10 and a half points. The trends have been toward the Democrats, but in this scenario, Trump is going to do well in South Texas. The suburban trends are going to level off or even head back toward Trump by a few points. That is going to put the state into double digits. And the last safe electoral vote for Trump is going to be in Maine's second congressional district. Now, the safe states for Biden, they're going to be all the usual states from Hawaii, the West Coast, Illinois, and much of the Northeast. Now, again, we're far out from the election. So maybe in six or seven months, things look different. That's always a possibility down the road. A lot of these states went hard for Biden last time. So I still think it's unreasonable to think they would get down under 10. And Biden is also going to get Maine's first congressional district safe. Now, let's go down to the states that would be just a little bit more competitive. These are going to be the likely states that are between a five and a 10 point margin. For Trump, he's got two of them. It's going to be North Carolina and his home state of Florida. In this, North Carolina just hits about five to six points. And in Florida, some people are probably going to say the trends have been so far to the right. Just look at the midterms where DeSantis won by 19 points. Of course, if it was a red wave, Trump would hit 10 points. I can't say there's no chance that happens, but in a presidential year with higher turnout, and because this is a different race, even if Trump got this by nine points, that would still be a remarkable right word shift. So safe is just a little bit too unreasonable. He's going to get it likely. Now the likely states for Biden, he also has two of them. He's going to get Colorado and New Mexico. These are states that I don't think Trump would really be competitive in even on a great night. He lost them by double digits last time. In this, he would get Colorado down to at least high single digits while New Mexico could get down to mid single digits. And I don't want to forget about Virginia. In this, it's borderline late likely. Last time Trump lost it by 10. The Northern Virginia trends are are not friendly for Trump. In this, it's going to get down probably under six. That's a solid improvement, but it's still going to stay likely for Biden. Now we go down to the competitive states. These are either going to be lean or tilt margins. Lean are under five points, while tilt is one point or less. So let's start with Trump. He's going to get a lot of these. He's going to get Nevada and Arizona. He lost both of these in 2020. Arizona, he won in 16, but the state has moved toward the left. The border is a key issue, and in this, he gets it back. I can't quite put them at likely, but they are closer to likely than tilt. He's also going to clean up in the Rust Belt. He's going to get Wisconsin. He's going to get Michigan and he's going to get Pennsylvania. I don't think it's too much of a stretch to say that at a great night, Trump is at least going to win these states. I have seen the polls that show Trump winning some of these by over five points. So I can understand on a great night, you might think these would go to likely. As I've said, we're too far out. I can't quite put these at likely. In this scenario, Trump flips them all back and he wins them by a four to five point margin. So that is a clear improvement than 2020 and 2016. And one more state for Trump is going to be Georgia. This is close to likely, probably at about four and a half to five points. It's similar with the other battleground states. Trump is definitely leading in most of the polls right now. And I think on a great night for Trump, those margins hold and he sweeps all the states. So let's go to the lean states for Biden. He's going to get Minnesota and New Hampshire. In Minnesota, Trump got close down to one and a half points in 2016. It went hard in the other direction last time. And this, I think he would get it down under five, but it would not quite flip. New Hampshire was was also extremely close back in 16. It was not that close in 20. In this, it's
it's going to get down under five again. And I don't want to forget about Maine at large. Back in 16, Trump won this by under five. The third party support could be a factor. I've seen the polls that show Trump in the lead at large. For right now, in this, it's still going to go leans for Biden. There's one electoral vote left, and that's in Nebraska's second congressional district. After redistricting, this did get a little bit redder. But for President Trump is not the right fit for this district. The trends are toward the left. In this scenario, I do think it would be extremely close. It could go either way. I had this going toward Biden, then I changed it to Trump, then I ended up changing it back to Biden. So he's going to get it by a tilt, and that means the final total is 312 for Donald Trump, 226 for Joe Biden. So Trump wins this one pretty comfortably, and a bunch of these margins are borderline. If it was a massive red wave, then I could see maybe another two or three of these states going likely for Trump. I know some people are going to say this is probably an average night for Trump. I get it. I've seen the polls. If they panned out, this is probably what it would look like. But we haven't really gotten into election season yet. It's possible in three or four months we're looking back on this and realizing how much it's changed. It could go more toward Trump. That's a possibility. It also could go in the other direction. The closer we get to election day, the easier it's going to be to fill out these maps. And this is also just the head-to-head -head Biden Trump matchup. Once third parties and Kennedy get their ballot access straightened out, then we could factor them in in future videos. So in this, Trump has a great night. He wins all the key states. He does way better than he did in 2020. He does better than he did in 16. He probably even narrowly wins the popular vote. So this is the map that I settled on. Let me know in the comments, do you agree with this map? Or do you think Trump would do even better in some of these safe blue states get down under 10 points? Maybe you have Virginia at leans. Maybe you have Florida at safe. Let me know down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And join if you'd like to support the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.